everybody, this is Bert from Soft Tubes, and I'm back with another trailer reaction. This one's a little bit late, it came out I think on Friday, it's now Sunday that I'm recording this, so it'll be out on Monday. <clears throat> this is the official teaser trailer for Doctor Sleep, which is <clears throat> technically the sequel to The Shining, but it's also apparently, from what I've heard, a big connective tissue for the Stephen King multiverse type thing. So we're gonna jump on in and see what this is, uh, what this looks like. Hello. Okay. Hmm. Morning. That's okay. School. Oh, that! Never run on the walls. Red rum! Red rum! pretty into that um i need to, to, to state one thing straight up i was not a big fan of the shining um this is always a thing that's always awkward to bring up with people that are like super into film um i'm not a massive kubrick fan i think kubrick is a damn good director one of the best directors we've ever had but I'm not a fan of his films. Um, for me, because <clears throat> there's two different things here. So, I can totally recognize the craft of what he does, um, the way he does it. Like, he is a master of crafting scenes and tension and uh, visuals. Like, the, his films are their own kind of beast for me in terms of cinema they're not it's hard to compare them to a lot of other stuff aside from more art house films and for a director that does things that are very art house that still have pretty good critical and commercial success is pretty amazing <clears throat> that being said i'm not a they're not movies that i enjoy watching is the way i should put it because one thing for me as a consumer of entertainment story narrative i like character that's my main thing it's part of the reason i really love playing D and and role-playing games and all that sort of stuff is i love character first and foremost i love 
seeing how characters interact and how they like emote and all those sort of things. And that's where I have the problem with Kubrick stuff because Kubrick stuff is a little I'm trying to think of the right word that doesn't make it me sound like overly critical because I'm not trying really being overly critical. I don't think. But he's lacking when it comes to character. Uh, that sounds too critical. And that's not exactly how I feel. Um, he, like, so f the way his things work, character is not the most important thing by far. It's not even in the top ranking of what's in, given the most importance. Because in his stuff... It's more about the narrative. So the characters often... They might be, in terms, very realistic characters. The problem is that makes them less interesting as characters. They could be very fine people to know and good people to hang around with. But not necessarily great um, characters to enjoy. Um, there's still things that people will have that are like, Oh, I connect with that. But for the most part, the characters are just kind of there for the plot. Um, even if you remember, you don't necessarily go like, man, um, ah, crap. Uh, Dave? Yeah, it's Dave in um, 2001. Uh, you don't go like, oh, fucking Dave is my favorite guy. I'm pretty sure it's Dave. Oh, my brain is, yeah. Um, or, yeah, like, you don't go, like, the, like certain characters are not your favourite characters in his films. You might go, like, I really like the performance. But if you're going to pick out a favourite character from a film, you're probably not going to pick a Kubrick film. Uh, and that works for the kind of films he makes. Like, 2001, I don't think would work as well if there were very, uh, not necessarily likeable characters... But they weren't characters that were interesting to watch by themselves. Um, I think it would lose a lot of what it's supposed to have. Because it's meant to be a kind of, a very sanitary kind of a film. It's meant to be very clean. And having too much character in there makes it a bit dirtier. Um, so that's kind of like, that. and for me, I like that dirtiness. I don't like things that are overly clean. Like The Shining is a fairly clean kind of film. I think it works for what it... Like, for building tension, it works. It works really well. Like, some of those just static, perfectly framed shots, like the elevator opening and the blood rushing out. It's a very sanitary shot, but it works so well in that sense of unease. Like, there is so much in there that has this sense of unease. And not having characters that you're like, man, I really like this person helps build into that unease. And so it actually it, it helps make it a better film. It's just not a film I enjoy. It's not a film I, I personally like. It's a good film that I don't like. And um, so basically, and I know Stephen King has come out and said that he doesn't like it. He likes the telemovie, which is a badly made thing, but has more character. And that's part of the, because Stephen King believes... I, I agree from what I read of King, but he believes he writes more character more than anything else. The spooks and the creepiness is simply kind of for him a hook uh, to get people in, but he's more interested in writing the characters in that, and I can see that, and that's part of what I like about Stephen King. So The Shining didn't have that character, so he's a little put off by it, and I'm a little put off by it, because that's what I want. I want character. Uh, there's a lot of films that I don't like simply because I don't, find character in them. They don't have to be characters I like, they just has to be more character, essentially. And so, I'm not a big fan of The Shining, um, but this looks good. This looks like, it's weird, because this is supposed to be a sequel to The Shining, but this looks like it has more character, and it, it it's going to be weird, because it's a different cinematography for a lot of that stuff. There's a lot of things that feel different, like... I, th I don't know whether it's just the how long this is after The Shining, or if it's a lot of other stuff on... You could probably not release The Shining today and make it a success. I don't 100% know if The Shining was a complete success when it came out originally. Um, so I feel like there's a lot of modernization here. Um, 
probably trying to be closer to what Stephen King wants from it, uh, given that King seems to be getting more involved with these stuff. He seemed to be very hands-off with a lot of his um, film stuff, I think, from what I've heard. He's getting a bit more involved, so maybe he's a bit more pushing for this sort of thing. And I, th but I think a lot of it is just marketability. Uh, having characters that you can see and feel uh, is very marketable. And so it means it's more likely to make a uh, return. It probably didn't cost a terrible lot to make. It's This is the kind of film that's in this vague, weird kind of thing where it's not... It's definitely not an action film or a comedy or anything along those lines. So you can't market it that way. It's a horror, but not necessarily a strict horror. And it's a thriller, but not necessarily a strict thriller. So it's in this weird kind of mishmash area of things, like a lot of Jordan Peele's stuff, where I don't think Jordan Peele's stuff necessarily is straight, like, is, is horror in the stricter sense of how marketing views it, and it's not thriller in the stricter sense of how marketing views it. And so there's always this little bit of befuddlement about how to market these kind of things. I think this is a really good trailer for the way of doing it. They are aiming a little bit more on that horror side while giving the hints that there's more going on. Um, one of the complaints I knew from people that didn't like the new It was that partly they didn't think it was enough of a horror film. Uh, and they found a few people found that it got a bit too weird. And I think part of that is expectation going in. They weren't expecting, basically, Lovecraftian monsters going into it. So, they're a little bit more put off by it. Here, I think they're trying to kind of negate that issue. Just realize that, yeah, this is Warner Brothers and they do it as well. Um, but yeah, they're basically trying to negate that a little bit. Um, essentially, what they're doing is they're giving you a little bit of story of the hints of magic and I call it the shining and there were people like us but they're all dead now um they're giving hints of that larger weirdness so it's not a complete shock to people when it comes up in the film they'll be able to go in and then go like oh this is that stuff that they were getting at and this is just the teaser I'm sure the trailers will try and get a little bit more into that they want you they don't want a negative reaction from people expecting a different kind of film. Because that's a thing. Even if you have a damn good movie, if people go in expecting a different movie, they can have a negative reaction, which affects your word of mouth, which affects your sales. So, they will probably want to neg and negate that as much as possible. Uh, even though they're probably not expecting this to make a lot of money, they're expecting it to do pretty decently. Um, they'll at least expect a return because they don't make movies unless they expect a return typically. The only time a studio will start not expecting a return is about halfway through production when they start realizing either it's not a good film, which I don't always trust studios to fully understand that. Um, but normally what they will see is we don't know how to market this or this isn't marketable at all. Uh, so they have issues in those areas. And so, that's typically when a, the studio will start going like, Ugh, I don't think we're... Sorry about the chair. Uh, th don't think we're going to actually make a lot of money off this. We may not even get an actual... We may not make a profit. We may not even break even. So they start looking at other things of what to do with it. And a lot of times in a cinema sort of structure, they will just relegate it to uh, release in some no-nothing part of the year where there's nothing else to compete with, because then it has a chance of getting an audience. And even if it doesn't, it's not taking a slot away from something that could earn better money at a better time of year. So that's typically what they do. With the introduction of streaming, what we're seeing is, and what I think we'll see more of, is things getting pushed on the streaming. Because streaming isn't as big a thing for people. Like, going to the movies, you've got to make a conscious decision to go. You've got to get in a vehicle. You've got to get there. You gotta pay money, like pay up money up front to get all the stuff and sit down in a place with other people and watch a thing. For a lot of people, that's a lot of steps and a lot of um, rigidity that they may not want. With things like Netflix, you're at home, you're just like, I don't know what to watch, like, 
this thing looks interesting click and you just watch it it's very casual there's no cost up front it's still costing you money technically but there's no cost up front and technically the more you watch the more value it is so they're going to start pushing that a lot more where anything they don't think is going to make profit they'll start selling to streaming services for maybe not necessarily enough to make a return but something they feel is reasonable enough that they're not making the worst loss that they could otherwise uh and that's always a tricky line because some of the things can naturally do really well when they find the right audience and they can realize they lost a lot of money i w this kind of thing going to cinema it'll be interesting to see where it does S audiences cinema going audiences have been a little strange of late they've really gone and seen things that may not necessarily have gotten audiences before uh jordan peele's us really springs to mind in that being such a big horror film opening like it's the kind of thing a lot of people wouldn't have expected i don't think the studio expected like i don't think bloomberg uh bloom bloomhouse bloomberg bloomhouse would have liked it, but they would not have expected it, I don't think. And I think a lot of that is these films getting in with niche audiences who really want to see this stuff. I, In part, I kind of think this is in partly due to superheroes. There's so many superhero films that there are audiences who don't necessarily want to see those superhero films. And so when a niche film comes out that sort of appeals to them, they're going to go out and see it or they're more likely to. And I think that's actually a good thing. Like, I don't necessarily think superior fatigue will necessarily take over. I think the worst that will happen is people kind of back off on superhero films and things like Marvel Studios will back off as well. And maybe, hopefully, they'll all do it before, but they might start exploring other genres within their uh, their branch. Like, Marvel Studios could start doing westerns and sci-fi and a lot of different stuff that isn't necessarily superhero. Um... But yeah, they'll back off and audiences will still back off. But then it'll just continue. It's kind of like how superheroes have been around since the 30s. There's an appeal there. Even if it drops off a bit, it doesn't go away. Um, and there's always a bit of opportunity in there. And in those, in that case, I think a lot of these things will do a lot better. They'll find a bigger audience. I kind of waffle on for a while there. A few different things I touched on. Not necessarily related to the trailer itself. But um, there, I think there are interesting things to talk about, especially in relation to this. This is a teaser, so there wasn't a lot of information actually to go off here. I haven't read Doctor Sleep. I don't know specifically what it's about, aside from it connects to The Shining. So uh, let me know what you guys think. If you know, if you've read the book or you know more about it at least, um, let me know what you think of this compared to that. Uh, if you think it's an interesting thing to explore. Uh, if you like this video or you didn't like it, there's likes and dislikes you can give. Uh, preferably likes. I would love a few likes. And uh, if you're new to the channel, you like film stuff, you like video game stuff, uh, make sure you hit subscribe. Uh, this weekend was a little busier for me than I expected. Um, so I, this week's a little up in the air on exactly what's coming out. I'm definitely hoping to have the next Layers of Fear. Those videos are a lot more work than I originally anticipated uh, due to some technical difficulties while recording. They're taking a lot more work in the edit. So they're taking a little bit longer to come out than I would have liked. The next part should be this week. I'm pretty close to having that finished. So hopefully this week that'll be out. Hopefully I'll also have a special video with Chris out as well. That one also requires a fair amount of editing, so I'm not sure yet. I was hoping to get it done this weekend, but I didn't get a chance. But then there's also a lot more stuff coming out. I've got a few trailers to catch up on, and also new stuff is always coming out. Plus video game stuff. There's a few E3 trailers I want to go back through and do reactions to because I haven't seen them yet. Or also anything new that comes up. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Uh, for that. Now some music. I do apologize. It gets so very hot here this time of year. It's fine. But you feel like you could just about.